Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And just like that, the Russian heavyweight contender Murat Gassiev is back. So he scored a second round stoppage against Mike Belligan in Armenia. So what we'll do is we'll quickly run through the action. Not really much to report. Gassiev uh, basically dropped Belligan with the first punch with any real intent. And Belligan did not get up. And then we'll talk about a few things because the what next is the interesting question. And also, can he stay healthy? What implications does the ongoing situation Situation with his country in Ukraine have for his career. It's unclear. But in terms of the fight, just one and a half rounds of action. And actually, Murat Gassiev really sort of eased into this one pretty slowly. First round, he basically just gave away, catching a lot of shots on the gloves, just uh, moving around, you know, getting a feel for things. Mike Belligan was trying to use um, distance. He was maintaining range. He was popping a jab, but no real intent on it. There was the odd jab to body and head. There was the odd left hand for the southpaw Belligan to Gassiev's body. Body, but really nothing much to report. I gave Belligan that first round. There was hardly any shots thrown, but he was just a bit busier and landed just a little bit more. Gassiev didn't really throw too much and certainly nothing of note. But it was the second round. You saw Gassiev actively trying to close the distance and there was nothing really Mike Belligan could do to stop it. And the first real big shot that Gassiev unloaded, or should I say unleashed, he uh, connects to the side of Belligan's head and uh, he goes down like a sack of potatoes potatoes off a cliff so he tries to beat the count he gets to his knees but he doesn't get any further up than that so ultimately the referee just counts him out so another stoppage win for Murat Gassiev who advances to 29 and 1 and the Russian also takes the O of Mike Belligan so Belligan coming into this was 20 and 0 he's a Lou Debella promoted fighter previously he had taken the O of Trey Lippy Morrison that's kind of what put him on the radar a little bit in the boxing uh, in the heavyweight division but he is a guy who'd come late to the sport previously being an athlete in other disciplines uh, or should I say other sports not necessarily fighting disciplines uh, but yeah Belligan he uh, gets dropped here dropped hard doesn't get up and Gassiev easy as you like and hopefully hopefully for Gassiev's sake, uh, sake he hasn't injured himself in some way shape or form because it's been one of the things that's really sort of held him up in recent years uh, since he moved up to heavyweight. Gassiev has only actually had four fights since losing to Alexander Usyk all the way back in mid-2018 in the World Boxing Super Series. And Balogun, even though he's a guy who's maybe top 40 there or thereabouts, that's sort of his position in the heavyweight division heading into this fight. This is Gassiev's best win at heavyweight since moving up to heavyweight in 2018. He's only had the four fights, Nuri Seferi, Mikhail Valish, and Karolus Welsh. All of those pretty pedestrian opponents uh, overall. Balogun did represent a tougher test, but ultimately uh, Gassiev had this one in hand and Balogun couldn't stand up to the power. And there's no shame in that. Gassiev is one of the bigger punches around and certainly the power has carried up to heavyweight. I did see heading into this one, he was, what, 238 pounds? And I thought... He's a guy at about, what, 6'2", or so, 6'3", max. I mean, I think 6'3", is that exaggerated height that uh, you have on box rig. But I thought, is that a little bit heavy for his size? Maybe 230 is more appropriate. But ultimately, we didn't really get to see if that was going to be a factor because the fight didn't go long enough. Uh, uh, Belligan was uh, coming into this at about 235, and he was uh, slightly shorter than Gassiev. But I guess the question now is, now that he's got this win, he'd been out for the best part of a year, um, what next? What does he do? You know, what are we actually going to see next from Murat Gassiev? What's the implication of the situation with his country and the, you know, uh, war with Ukraine? Because it looks like that may have impeded his ability to one fight in Russia at this time or potentially elsewhere. I mean, this sort of fight, it probably wouldn't normally be in Armenia. But uh, yeah, so it's interesting to sort of see if they're going to have to wheel him out in these sorts of um, uh on these sorts of cards in those uh, sort of neutral type countries. 
but who's it going to be against? So in terms of what the commentators were saying, um, obviously I couldn't understand the majority of what they were saying, but I did pick up different names that they were mentioning, and presumably that would be in connection with a possible Merrick Gassier fight. They mentioned Derek Chisora. They mentioned Kubrat Pulev. Uh, Alexander Usyk's name was mentioned. Also Deontay Wilder, but perhaps the most realistic name was Arslan Bek Makhmadov, who was also Russian. So he's a guy that's been living and fighting out of Canada in recent years. But that could be a potential option. You know, I would quite like to see that fight. You've got a guy in Makhmadov, what, 6'5", 260. He's uh, sort of a come forward, fun fighter, big right hand, big right uppercut against uh, Mirek Gassiev, who out of the two is certainly the more technical. But Gassiev, he can bang. And could Makhmadov uh, take too many of those shots if he, he, he was to just uh, eat them with reckless abandon, as has been his sort of style in the pros? I would certainly like to see that fight. How realistic it is, unclear. Makhmadov promoted by Eye of the Tiger Management and also on a co-promotional arrangement with Top Rank to fight on ESPN, although we'll have to see what happens with that arrangement. It's not to say that someone like Gassiev and Makhmadov couldn't be made, but certainly it makes a lot of sense in my view. I mean, at the moment, they are the number one and number two uh, of the Russian heavyweight contenders. So, you know, certainly uh, some national pride at stake if they were to fight. I like that one. But the key is activity for Mirat Gassiev. The past five years since their Alexander Usyk loss, just the four fights, and it's been pretty pedestrian stuff. Not only injury has been an issue, uh, promotional management type issues as well have beset him. He once signed a matchroom deal and never fought with matchroom at heavyweight. So unclear what the next step is, but it's good to see Mirat Gassiev back. And if you can believe it, still only 29 years old. So when he fought Usyk, I believe he was, what, 24, and he'd been a unified champion at Cruiserweight, and it looked all that was ahead of him. And uh, basically the past five years has been a bit of a write-off in terms of uh, his activity and action in the heavyweight division. So I hope we see him again soon because he is a talent. He's an exciting fighter with power. Certain styles and guys who can box and move are going to give him issues. But it's good to see Murat Gassiev back. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like. Hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.